Well, hi everybody. Welcome to this video. Move my little necklace around. Welcome to this video where we're talking about the difference between twin flames, karmic soulmates, and soulmates. So this is a video that a lot of you have asked of me, have asked me to do a long, long time ago. And we've talked about this in a lot of the readings. We've talked about this on Soulful Revolution a lot about twin flame, karmic, soulmate, all of these, the nomenclature of all of this. So right out of the gate, I just want to say something to you. Okay. Try not to get so bogged down in the nomenclature. <laughs> Try not to get into the energy of, are you my twin flame? Are you my soulmate? Are you a karmic? Also, <clears throat> mostly because I don't think that's really helpful. I feel like focusing on the energy of the learning, because as you know, one of my main messages to those on Soulful Revolution when we do the readings is, twin flame is not necessarily a person, it's an energy, okay? Because my job here is to, is to help you open up to the idea of attachment as being rejection or resisting twin flame relationship, resisting the lessons you're here to learn, resist, resist, resist. So when you focus on the nomenclature, when you focus on the, it's a false twin, it's a twin, you know, uh, nah, okay? So I'm gonna give you some definitions here and keep put a little asterisk by the twin flame is not a person, it's an energy because here's the thing. Twins on this planet come into incarnation. Twin flame is the, the one twin flame. There is one person that is a twin flame energy. Not everybody on this planet is a twin. And I will explain how that all works because now people are really interested in finding their twin and this is a twin and all this kind of stuff. Not everybody's a twin. However, in 2019, as we move forward, there are more people opening up to the templates of twin flames. That's why there's so many people talking about it. I've seen numbers thrown around like there's 144,000, blah, 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 whatever. Who cares? I've always felt that's a little elitist anyway. So what I want to say to you is the twin flame. So I'm, I did a little drawing. <laughs> Can you see this? Whoopsie. <laughs> Can you see this? Did my little notes here. Twin flame in the middle, then karmic energies around that, and then soulmates. So subset soulmates have a subset of karmic soulmates. And then there's a very elite for you in your relationships. There's going to be this one energy, this one vibration of twin flame. Now, um, twin flames, original twin flames, so-called original twin flames. This has been something that I have studied for a while um, because I was born in the 60s and the original twin flames, the original um, cadre of twin flames came to earth in the 40s, from the 40s to the 60s. So mostly after World War II into the mid 60s. Okay. And those were the most difficult time. That was the most difficult time to incarnate as a twin flame. You come into the world as a twin flame and you come here and you forget who you are and the process of your life is remembering who you are. So that's why these awakenings are happening. They're happening more often than they now than they ever did in the 40s into the 60s. In the 60s, in that whole period of time when people were awakening in the mid 60s, those people from the 40s were in their it was were in their 20s, right? Like this is what what, what was going on. And that was a time period of a great awakening. So you know from dealing with your American history or any kind of history class you would take, 20th century is a very, if Earth is a dense energy, 20th century was a super dense energy too, okay? That was the time period when everything was about, you know, um, the 3D experience of life. And any spirituality had to be practiced in traditional religion. So as you move forward into the 60s, some things that were happening were more people were waking up. That's when that's when twin flame energy really started to open up. And there was such a small number of twin flames at that time. And they were planted all over the world. That's why there was distance 
between twin flames because it was a small number and you know it was like i'm gonna put your twin flame over in china and you're gonna get you're gonna be born in chicago and you may never see each other you also may be incarnating you may be 14 and they may be 60 you know or something like that or they may be 40 <clears throat> and it wasn't appropriate for you to be together for whatever reason the difference in rate and age difference in culture whatever these are some of the things that twin flames were brought into the world to upend that's why that whole summer of love in the 60s was such a big freaking deal it was busting through a lot this was the first time we're really upending traditional um uh structures traditional belief systems right and that's one of the reasons twin flames were brought to earth so there was a small number of them at that time those twin flames a small number of them have found their other half their other a twin flame is one soul two bodies right so when they find each other the magic it's magical and so because of all of those reasons for keeping it apart it was really just about like a thousand points of light there wanted to be light dotted all over the world so you know everybody that person that twin could raise the vibration right all over the world evenly distributed i don't know but what those twin flames did the ones born from the 40s to the 60s what they really did was they upended some traditional templates okay and if you're born in the mid 60s, then you didn't, you weren't coming of age until, you know, the 80s, mid, late 80s, mid 90s. That's when the next wave of twin flames started to incarnate. And the original twin flames, their job was to template this kind of higher vibration relationship so that others in the future could access it by becoming awakened. It is one of the opportunities that you can access. More people can access it. That was the job of it. So while in back in the day, it might have just been these people and no one else really accessed the template because they were build, busy building the template. Now, when we're in the, you know, we're almost to the end of the second decade of the 21st century, which is like blowing my mind. There's only two months left in this decade. There's so many more people accessing the template and calling themselves twin flames. And I'm sort of like, yes, you are. If you're in a spiritual awakening, if you're accessing the templates, who cares? We're, we're done. We're throwing out that idea, in my view anyway, of this original twin flame, this very elitist kind of thing. All right, we're throwing that out. So that was the purpose. That was a lot of the purpose. And when the, those twin flames came together, it was very powerful. So they're in different bodies. They share the same soul. The lessons are about healing, upending traditional um templates that are uh, upending tr traditional structures or norms values whatever has kind of become cemented because the heavy dense energy of the world is um not fundamentally based on love the twin flame energy is about love is about you know spreading this light vibration this higher vibration so that's what twin flames are really doing here. They're about being authentic souls or about being creating templates for other people to access. So somebody born in the 80s, late 80s, they're like, I'm a twin flame. And you're like, OK, fine. From the 90s through now, um, twin flame energy, those souls, you know, Gen X, Gen Z or not Gen X, I'm Gen X, Gen Z, um, millennials in, in large part gen z all of that stuff the authenticity level the higher vibration um the less dense kind of experience that these people have coming in allow them to access the template way more easily way they're not necessarily going through as much dense ugh, trying to fight through it okay not not as much so being a and, and you know what here's the thing philosophy the more the merrier the more people access the twin flame energy the twin flame template creating this higher vibration love and all of that the more people do that the more of us there are now are there a lot of people on on earth right now who are like ah twin flames it's a bunch of people who are in this like cinderella story I only want this like really amazing high vibration love. They stay in abusive relationships. They stay in difficult situations because in the name of twin flame, 
I agree. Okay. I agree with that because one of the lessons of twin flame is about self-love and getting out of those situations. Here's the cool part. Here's what I want to, here's what I want to really offer you some interesting hope. So if you are staying in what you believe to be a twin flame relationship and it is hurtful, it is harmful. My advice here is to pull back, see what the lessons are, learn the lessons, do the healing work and detach. Detach. Because that's not the purpose of twin flame is to keep people in low vibration relationships. That is not the purpose. So what it's showing you, okay, the twin flame, the purpose of twin flame relationship is to see the unhealthy patterns. Yes. That person may be reflecting to you under unhealthy patterns because a lot of people who are in this twin flame connection or who are in an authentic, an authentic vibration can be in these relationships that are termed twin flame and have not a clue and be like, why is this other person acting like there's something so super duper special about this relationship? Well, let me let you in on a little secret. In higher vibration, as you work down, as you do work that heals yourself, as you build, as you move forward, as you become a beacon of light, as you do your work in the world, as you do all these things, you are going to be able to access this high vibration love for a lot more than one person. Okay? Because there are a lot of people on this planet who may be actual twin flames who are not, who are resisting, who are, uh, uh, not going into those relationships for various reasons, the mindset that it's all about unhealthy stuff. Am I, am, I'm, I am here to tell you that yes, people who are in those, in that paradigm can get sucked into unhealthy relationships, can see another person as, I think they're my twin. Well, you know, um, does it matter? Does it matter? I mean, if you're getting sucked into, if you're in a relationship, sorry, sorry, not sucked in. If you're in a relationship and you have an attachment to it, and it is hurtful, unhealthy. Um, it is dragging you down. Who cares if it's a twin flame or not? Your job is about self-love. Who cares? Because in reality, you can access the higher vibration template and so can other people. And you can find this connection, this high vibration connection with other and other person. Okay? So the, the drive here is to not stay in those hurtful, abusive relationships. That's what that's trying to show you. It's reflecting to you that this is not good. So at the very least, detach from it, do your healing work. Because you know what, here's the thing. If that person is your twin, then two things, one of two things will happen. And you, if when you detach from it, either they will go away and you'll never hear from them again, in which case, what that means to me is they have not done their healing energy. If they are true twin and they do their healing energy, they will be back, okay, in a different vibration. But it requires you to detach from it. And the way you can do that, because I feel like a lot of people stay in those vibrations, stay in that lower vibration, and that's never going to be the high vibration love you want. That's never going to be the true twin experience. You can detach from that. The hope, there's hope here in that other people can access that template too. That's why those original twins mattered so much. They created this template so that now people are waking up. Now there's so many more. I don't know, like when I was growing up in the 60s and the 70s, the flower children, all of that stuff, all of those mind altering experiences, all of that free love, all of those things, what they were really doing was opening up to a new way of being, right? It was no longer this, it has to be this or that. There was no more duality about it. They were opening up those templates. They were questioning authority, questioning why am I doing straight up religion? Why when it, when it is not serving me, if that was their case? Why do I want to have this kind of life? That's not what I'm looking for at all. So, this is the twin flame experience, all right? So the duality of this situation, twin flame is also here to blur this whole duality. It's not this or that. There's many other choices. There's many, you can see this in the LGBTQ community. You can see this in the work community. You can see this in the relationship community of all kinds.
okay? So you're seeing that the duality of the 20th century is being muted and changed thanks to the twin flame, thanks largely to the twin flame, thanks to the opening, the awakening. So the twin flame is in the middle. There is a small number of people comparatively who really wake up and open up to that template. You, however, as a twin can access that template and be, find that higher vibration because what's going to happen is as we this is a process of evolution this is a process there's no end game here this is where we're going is way different than what we're experiencing now i don't even know if we can see the hundreds and thousands of years ahead and where this is taking us but i can tell you this when you are in this template and you are opening to things you are upending uh, norms, you are upending traditional relationships and traditional um, structures that keep people in boxes. You're upending all of these things. That's going to expand your life. Okay, that is going to expand your life. So as we have more people coming on this planet, the millennials, everyone like that is just so much more open and authentic. Um, and available for this template so things can't so you can walk away in good stead detaching from a person you believe to be your twin and know that if you want to access the template and have that relationship you will you will but what it requires of you is to do the work it requires it is all about self-love so staying in the low vibration relationships of abusiveness of narcissism of any of the ego driven kind of things not gonna get you there okay that's the reason that's the hard part is to let that stuff go detach attachment is the problem all right attachment is the problem self-love is the problem so do more work on that the next circle out is the karmics okay and i do feel like there's this whole negative connotation to karmics and I do feel like um, when we have sometimes I remember this back in back when I first started the channel uh, soulful revolution that we would do do a readings and someone a lot of uh, triangles a lot of people who are married um, would find their twins okay and the one who was married to them would always be the karmic and they're bad right they're the ones who are keeping the twin love from becoming real not really. Those karmic soulmates include twin flames. All right, remember my little my little drawing here? Okay, karmic soulmates include twin flames because karmic soulmates are here to bring you valuable lessons, to teach you valuable lessons if you're open to it. If not, you're going to keep repeating that cycle, okay? Karmic relationships, karmic soulmates, you may have a few very strong ones almost as strong as a twin, but not necessarily in a positive way, right? The karmic energy can be such that you are learning things in a negative way. You know who is responsible for that? You. Because when you come across people, if you have lessons to learn on this planet, there is a little bit of, do you want to do it the easy way or do you want to do it the hard way? There is a little bit of that. And the resistance to learning lessons on the journey calls in a karmic soulmate to be like, all right, I got it. No worries. I got it. And that's why they get a bad rap. But they are the catalysts. They are the people who are, you know, from, from a spiritual perspective, the, the, to be the person who brings tough love, who brings re relationships and, and experiences that require someone to dig deep, require someone to learn something so deep, you know? I mean, the twin has this, has this mandate too. The twin energy has the same mandate. May come at it differently though, okay? May come at it differently. So it's a challenge to look at, for, for example, if a person you believe to be your twin is married to another person and that person is being awful to your twin or is putting them through all kinds of stuff it's really easy to blame that person but the fact is your twin your person attracted that okay they attracted that so let's not blame people 
for having karmic energy, for having karmic relationships. These are the soul contracts. If you ever get a chance to read Carolyn Mace's book, M-Y-S-S, Soul Contracts, these are the things, these are the people who come across your path. And a lot of times the reason karmic energy is negative is because it's like a wham, I got to get your attention. I got to get your attention. So that's why karmics are given that kind of bad rep. They're the black hats of the soulmate world because, hey, I don't have time to be delicate, right? You got to get it done. If you've been resisting this lesson over and over again, I got to get it done, okay? Because you got twin flaming to do. You got lifting your vibration to do. You're not listening. So it's that person who is attracting that energy who is saying, okay, I will stay with a narcissist. Okay, I will be in that. And a lot of twin flames do that in their other relationships, not with twins, with karmics. They say, yes, I will stay in that energy because I think it's my twin. It's so, kar it's so, right? You see how people can get confused. At the end of the day, there's no reason to stay in those lessons. Learn the lessons. Get the hell out. Okay, there's no reason to stay there longer than you have to. The, the, one of the reasons that all of us on YouTube are putting up videos about Twin Flame is to help people see. You don't have to stay in it. You don't have to stay there. Let it go. Because when you let it go and you just, you know, move on with your life, that's freeing. That's very much freeing up the energy to get rid of some of that stuff you've been holding on to that attracts in a higher vibration. So if your twin is not that person, right? I don't believe, I personally don't believe that twins can actually be narcissists. I believe, you know, narcissism is a spectrum thing, okay? And most narcissists go undiagnosed. And you can have narcissistic ten tendencies. In fact, we all have them. You wouldn't get out of bed in the morning if you didn't have a little bit of narcissism in you because it drives you to do stuff for you. The test here is, are you hurting other people to get that done? Are you on purpose doing things that bring pain to other people? That's the dividing line between, well, you know, they have some tendencies here and this person has a personality disorder, diagnosable, per, you know, diagnosable NPD. Most of them are not diagnosed because those people don't tend to go to shrink, shrinks, don't tend to go to therapists because they think they're perfect. So why would they go? A lot of times it gets caught in marriage counseling. It gets caught when um, the arrogance or the ego is big enough to be like, okay, I will go. And also some narcissists just love to talk about themselves so much that by the time I mean, a therapist can pretty much see it at 10 paces. It's not really a hard thing to diagnose. We can all see it. You know, we all see it. It's the extent of it. It's the extreme nature of it. That's what makes it hurtful, okay? So um, I personally don't believe that um, when you get into that kind of extreme narcissism, I just believe that is such a uh, corrosion of soul energy that even if, by some stretch of the imagination, they had a twin flame. That person is lost to that energy. They're just not capable of it. They have opted out. So what does it matter if a twin can be a narcissist or has no, you know, what does it matter? Because they're, that is a personality disorder and that is not fixable. It is not fixable. Do not run the other way. There is no fixing that person. And empaths really get sucked into it because if it's my twin. I'm going to get, I want to heal this person. I want to help this person. No, what that's showing you is you need to heal yourself. It is not possible. And it's ego if you stay and try to fix that person. You can't. They, only they can fix themselves. All right. They're really, there's only, and you know, the healers among watching this, there's only holding space for someone else to do the work of healing. There is no really, you're healing someone else. You're not really doing that. What you're doing is you're holding space and you're 
helping them move their energy, do what needs to happen for themselves. That NPD person is not capable of it. I mean, I hate to, I hate to, you know, sort of damn them to a life away from real love, but they've done it to themselves. It's not really me saying that. That's just a fact. Um, so karmics bring you valuable lessons, just like twin flames do. Twin flames is our subset. They vanish when one lesson is learned. They can come back. Okay. Twin flames have an ongoing uh, sort of experience with each other that does sort of ebb and flow, come and go, things like that. But karmics will like vanish without a trace. Without a trace. And come back and have more awful lessons. <laughs> At least the twin flame, there is a joyful energy about it. There is something that brings the two together in this amazing high vibration thing. Once that goes through, once the bubble love phase goes through, then the, the work really starts. However, um, the karmic lessons, the karmic people, they may come back. The purpose is, I believe per personally, that karmic energy, karmic soulmates, of which twin flames are a subset, that energy is about, you ever play pin the tail on the donkey? when they put a blindfold on you and they spin you around, that's what a karmic does. They put a blindfold on you. That's why that Eight of Swords card is so meaningful to me. It's, they try to confuse you, they on purpose, try to spin you around, try to confuse you. It's your job to find your way out of that, okay? They try to turn us around, confuse us, so we seek answers. That's why the karmic soulmates are so amazing. So let's not, let's, let's celebrate that. Even if it's a difficult way of learning, they're turning people around so that they, people get really confused and then they go seek answers. They become seekers. That's powerful. So the bigger group, soulmates, encompasses both the karmic and the twin flames. And um, the soulmates by and large, not let's exclude karmics and twin flames for a second here. Most soulmates are they feel like they feel like home. They feel it's it's an easier thing. It just works. It's just, you know, this is not necessarily a really a push for anybody to go seeking spiritual answers, right? This relationship feels good or feels if it doesn't it doesn't always feel good. There's lessons learned and all of that stuff, but it just feels a little bit lighter. It feels a little bit like, you know, you just travel along, like my best friend of 50 years is a soulmate. And she and I have traveled along this earth. You know, I live somewhere, she lives somewhere. We always are in connection. We're always, we process out loud. We, we do this, you know, we know our process. And so that's a soulmate. That's what a soulmate is. Your parents can be soulmates. Your um, fifth grade teacher can be soulmate. My Mrs. Gregor was one of my soulmates in, in 11th in high school and um, helped me move through the death of my father. And I've told that story a number of times. Um, these people, it's just, it's very, it feels good to you. It feels like you know this person, right? You can feel that way about a karmic and you can definitely feel that way about a twin flame. So you see how some of these overlap. Because the bigger picture is soulmates, a subset of that is the karmic soulmates, and then an even smaller subset is the twin flame, okay? So whenever you get tempted, if, if you have a question about a person and you feel a strong connection with them, they've been in your life for a long time, or they come and go, or they, you feel like a home connection, guarantee they're a soulmate, okay? How the relationship unfolds, may determine whether they're a karmic soulmate. And then if there's this real spiritual, overwhelming um, thing that happens, the twin flame experience, then that's it. So just be peaceful with the idea of soulmates. There's hundreds of thousands of people that cross your path every day in the course of your life that never teach you a lesson that never really have any impact on your life, that you may have a pleasant conversation with. You may even be friends with them, people I went to high school with or people I went to college with. 
I don't feel like a lot of those are soulmates. I feel like they're acquaintances. I feel like they're friends. I feel like they're, it's a very earth-based kind of relationship. There's not a lot of they're there. There's not a lot of meat to it. But the soulmates, I could tell you who those people are. The karmics for sure. It's confusing when we get to the twin flame and I'll tell you why. Because now in the late, in the mid, we're getting into the mid 21st century, the templates are available to more people. You can access the template. If you want to be a spiritual seeker and get to that higher vibration and be in love with another person also in higher vibration, guess what? That feels like twin because the purpose of twins is to heal unhealthy patterns, upend situ uh, situations, traditions, institutions that no longer serve a purpose as we go on our evolutionary path. So if you can, the survival guide part of this is if you can look at those people and you know who I'm talking about, I guarantee you, you know, soulmates and the karmics and then the twin. The twin is the most confusing because it encompasses all of that in a very concentrated way. And it has a very high level spiritual purpose. But now that we're accessing the template, more and more people coming online, everybody looking for their twin flame, it's of no longer of any service or of any use to us to be like, well, you're not an original twin flame. Who cares? The template is there for us to access. And that kind of love is available to us all now. Okay? So I hope this was of some help for you. If you have more questions about this, if there's something I didn't cover, if there's something you really want you know, to ask, please put it in the comments. Please like, share, and uh, subscribe to the new channel. I hope you like Souls on Fire. Um, so lovely to see you guys. Namaste. Have a wonderful day. And um, it's all about love, man. <laughs>